built as a home in 1850. Restaurant That's amazing. since 1880, opened by a guy named Emil Commander, hence the tacky name. Okay. Um, and uh, built as a home, but never really lived in his home. Really? I, I mean, it's like, massive. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bigger now than it was originally, oh, but, okay. but not a lot. I mean, um, it was definitely, you know, one of those mansions that took a long time to build. Right. Um, and my family bought it in 1969. Uh, from the Morans who had it and our family loved it but you know um, restaurants sometimes can go through peaks and valleys right. like any other business right. and it we like to uh, had fallen on hard times but uh, so, uh, my mom and her siblings bought it and uh, just started working on it and you know built it right. back up right there's a few little rooms you know right. blah, blah, blah. but there's kind of four areas okay. in the restaurant which works out nicely so after Katrina, was there ever a point where you considered not reopening? No. Never. And, but then, not too long after we got reopened here, our restaurant that we've had for 45 years in Houston, Brennan's, burned down in the middle of Hurricane Ike. Oh my gosh. And that took 18 months to reopen, almost. And this was only 13 months, so I now look back on it as an extraordinary accomplishment. <laughs> he starts the book talking about what was the point where New Orleans started, started thinking of itself as a gourmet food town. Yeah. <laughs> and he pegs that moment opening Mr. B's Bistro. That's interesting. Uh, 1979. But mm -hmm. um, I, I would imagine that mom and them might think that was somewhat earlier. But anyway, I hate the word gourmet. I know. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> and, and none of was, us are he, that. He did, he did make that point, okay. but you know, it's when New Orleans sort of became conscious of themselves as a food town. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I think, um, again, mom and her siblings back when they really moved Brennan's to Royal Street where mm -hmm. it is now mm -hmm. and that was a big deal at the time huh. they spent a ton of money on the restaurant and it was just a very serious restaurant that there have been a lot of restaurants in New Orleans that kind of did the same thing forever and forever and there still are those and we love them and right. uh, whatnot but this has never been what we were about you know what I mean and so Brennan's was just this big brash we're coming right at you, you know, uh, I'm going to keep evolving right. the cuisine. So right. I would put it way back to then, but but I get his point. Okay. I totally get his point in, in the modern era. Yeah. Um, Mom and Paul Prudhomme did that menu for the you original know, opening menu. Interesting. I can remember it oh, yeah. very, very well. She's launched pretty much the career of Paul Prudhomme and mm -hmm. Emeril Lagasse and people like this. And, you know, what they... Um, they began sourcing locally, which now everybody's a locavore, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> locavore. And I just wonder how it is that that she was so prescient to to pick that kind of talent to nurture. Do you think? You, you know, um, interestingly, we've talked about some of that stuff a little bit because you know, at the time, uh, uh, what was going on in America was, you know, post World War II, we were enamored of, of things in cans right. and yeah. freezing yeah. things was just oh, fabulous, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but at the same time that that was going on, uh, Nouvelle Cuisine started happening. Right. And, um, which we knew wouldn't really yeah. fly in New Orleans. Right. But there were pieces and parts of it, you know, so presentation and, you know, a little bit more thinking of fresh and, you know, uh, people weren't running around screaming local at the time. But, um, so at the same time that, that was happening, so they're, you know, they're lightening up, they're doing Nouvelle Cuisine. Well, who does mom hire? Paul Prudhomme. It seems to me that that was the moment when Creole and Cajun crashed yeah. was in, here in this kitchen of this grand old New Orleans restaurant, you know, and that had been the type of food to some degree that uh, mom and them had served, though they'd always, you know, been pushing it. And then here comes Paul with just straight up Cajun, mm -hmm. which there were no Cajun restaurants in New Orleans, none. Mm -hmm. right. The Bon Tom was the first one. I don't know what year that but was. But Cajun was kind of looked down upon. Totally. Yeah. We totally looked down our right. nose at that. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, Cajun was when you went fishing and you stopped at the gas station and the guy had the ice chest and you got boudin out of it. Right. Which I'm surprised we're all still here to tell the story, you know. But Paul, you know, pushed that and it was it was too heavy for mom. Um, but, but a lot of it, you know, a lot of it still made it onto here. And then when they did the Mr. B's menu, you see lots of that on there that a dish that I remember uh, pasta jambalaya was on the mm -hmm. now what a great idea mm -hmm. you know because Mr. B's was supposed to be a pasta house in its original incarnation um, but it you know had a wonderful New Orleans and Cajun and Creole influence um, you know an oyster stew so what it rather quickly became was sort of a New Orleans 
um, well, bistro, but yeah, it was you know exactly way more casual at <laughs> yeah, the right, right, beginning. Right. Um, you know, certainly come. You know, it's fine dining at this point.